Good evening, Breakthrough Church, Breakthrough International Ministries. Good evening. We welcome you tonight. We're going to ask everyone to stand as we do our opening prayer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time here, we want to welcome you on behalf of uh, Prophet Junior and Mama Manish Bennett. Welcome to Breakthrough International Ministries. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being in your presence again. Thank you for another opportunity to stand in your presence and in your house. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, Lord, that has allowed us to be here again. We thank you for your mercies are new every morning and your faithfulness is great. And it is that that has carried us through this week. It is that that has carried us through this day. We thank you, Father, as we come before you tonight, God, we ask that you would, oh God, meet us here in this place, let, that your presence that you, we carry within us, Lord God, would infiltrate this room. Father, that your presence would saturate this room, that your glory would saturate this room. In the name of Jesus, Father, we come lifting our burdens and our cares to you on tonight, for you care for us, God. Those coming through the doors, Lord God, seeking a word from you, seeking something that they need, Father, we ask that you would meet them here on tonight. God, lift the heavy burdens, lift oppression. May the Sick be healed, Lord God. May those who are bound be delivered in the name of Jesus. We thank you. This is the place, Lord God, where burdens are lifted, Father. This is the place, Lord God, where shackles are set free, where the bound can come in and be set free in your presence, in your name, Father. We thank you, even right now, as Prophet Junior prepares to bring the word, Lord God, we thank you that you would use his mouth as the pen of a ready writer, Father, that he would just be, Lord God, free to minister to your people. We thank you, Father, for the freedom in this room. We thank you for the freedom and the glory in this room. Rest up upon us tonight, God. Rest upon us tonight, Father. We thank you for the worship that will go forth, Father. We thank you for the worship leaders, Father, that they would minister, Lord God, to your people. Lord God, that as we come in tonight, that as we come in tonight, that as we come in tonight, Father, we would meet you, that we would meet you, those that are in need, Father, that they would seek you, Lord God, and that they would find you tonight in this room and that they would carry you with them throughout their lives, not just tonight, Father, but they would carry you with them throughout their lives. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness is great. We thank you for just who you are and what you've done for us. We thank you for being our Father and our God. We thank you for being our Father and our God. And we uplift and magnify your name for you are great. There is no one like you, Father. There is no one like you, Father. And so we are grateful. We are grateful to you tonight, God. We thank you for all that you do and all that you're going to do. We thank you in Jesus' name. Come and let us sing, let us sing, come and 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 let
thank you. Chosen generation, we've been called for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. Come on, if you know it, see it. We are a chosen generation, we've been called for to show his excellence. All I require for life. God has given me, oh, I know who I am, I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at, I know who I am, I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at, I know who I am, I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracles.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we are who you say we are. We're not what we think we are. We're not what anyone else around us thinks that we are, Father, but we are who you say we are. So thank you, Jesus, that you define us and that we are in you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe that tonight? Oh, yeah. Every day with you, Lord. Oh, yeah. James 2.23. So Abraham believed. How many believers here tonight? And it says it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. I thank God that he calls us his friends. In spite of all that we have done, if we'll only believe, say only believe, only believe, only believe. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's a place. Yeah. 
Somebody lift your hands as we celebrate the greatness of our God. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. Just the worship song that says this, our God is awesome.
Mighty, omnipotent Father, Prince of Peace and Lord of Lords, you are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Lord, without you, where would we be? We are alive and well because of you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. Father, we thank you that you're in this place this very moment. We thank you for your presence that is with us right now, this very instant. We thank you that the Holy Spirit is here. He is here. And we thank you, Father, for what you're about to do even now in this place. Father, we ask of thee, Lord, that even now that you will not look upon our sins, but please look upon your grace. For, Father, we are nothing but filthy rags. But it's because of your grace and mercy why we have been given a second chance. Why we have been given life and that so more abundantly. So even now, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are here in this place. We thank you, dear Lord Jesus Christ, for all those who are coming, those who are on their way, those who are already here. We thank you that even if it is one soul, that tonight is for we thank you we thank you lord jesus christ for what you're about to do even now we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise in jesus mighty name amen and amen amen hallelujah i want you to turn to your neighbor and say this is the day that the lord has made <laughs> and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, Milan, do you have that song that I love singing? The uh, He is here, hallelujah, that uh, instrumental that we did the last time. Do you think we can get that? I just feel the presence of God in this place so heavily. And I'll be feeling the Lord. But even before we sing that song, I'd like to introduce, uh, well, actually just for her to say hi, She'll give a wave offering. My mom, all the way from Florida, is in the house. Amen. So, Amen. I, you know I don't take that lightly. Uh, the Bible says you need to honor your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother so that what? Your days may be long. And because I want to have a long life, I make sure I honor my mama. And I honor my wife's parents also. And so I'd like to welcome my mom who flew up with us from Florida. And she's here and I give God thanks for her. It is because of her why you know me. So I would tell you to love upon her and blow some kisses her way. And just give God thanks for her. So give her a round of applause. Hallelujah. Are you ready? I want you to lift your hands to heaven and I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. I want you to take your mind off of every distraction from everything, anything that you have been battling with and you have looked at as a problem. And I 
I want you to focus on Jesus right now. I don't want you to focus on anything that does not cause your faith to increase in him. I don't want you to focus on anything that causes your focus to be on that thing, which is a distraction, rather than being your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. So even now, I want you to just lift your hands and I want you to say, Father, thank you. Thank you for being God. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for being kind. Thank you for loving me when I have been unlovable. Thank you for, for blessing me when I have given you no reason to bless me. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, somebody open your mouth right now and just thank him. For this is a house of prayer. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, you are good. You are patient. You are kind. Come on, somebody thank him. Thank him. Thank him for what he's about to do in your life. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank him thank for you. what he has for done, he has what done he's about to do. Thank him for the doors he has closed and what he has yes. opened and what he's about to open. Come on, somebody thank him right now. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and thank him. Thank him. Open up your mouth and thank the Lord. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and thank him. Open up your mouth and thank him right now. For he's good and his mercies endureth for all generations. Come on. Oh, give thanks you. unto the Lord for he is good. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I sense an awesome movie of the Holy Spirit and I see his countenance resting on your face and I know that there are angels For the presence of the Lord is in this place. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen.
Someone lift your hands to heaven and just say, thank you, Jesus. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, Lord. Lord. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. That you're doing in this season. That you're doing in this season. At this very moment. At this very moment. At this very time. At this very time. Please don't do it without me. Please don't do it without me. Hallelujah. 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 I want you, before you sit, I want you to just... Give a neighbor a shake of hand. Just find at least two persons and just give them a, a warm, warm welcome and love. And just tell them, God bless you. God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Find two persons and just shake their hands. And just tell them, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. <coughs> So I promise I won't be long. I promise I'll be quick. And as I'm being quick, I want you to really and truly be ready for what God is about to do. Be open. Be ready to receive. Because after tonight, I guarantee you uh, 200 million percent that you will not leave the same way you came tonight. Amen. Amen. I know you may be looking around and I tell people all the time, I never worry about numbers of how many people that are here, not here, how many spaces is in the chairs. I always say every time I look at the chairs, I don't see empty chairs. I see angels sitting. Amen. 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 So I want you to, first of all, I know this may be crazy, but I want you to trust me. You, tr you guys trust me? Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. I want you to stand and give a round of applause to the Holy Spirit that is here in this room. I want you to welcome the Holy Spirit. If you can clap for man, you can clap for him. Someone welcome the Holy Spirit in this place right now. Somebody welcome him in this room right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a beautiful song. I remember my mom used to sing it. Uh, a beautiful song. It says, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know, my God, I can feel his presence. And I know that there are angels in this place. Sweet, holy spirit. Sweet, heavenly dove. Stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for each blessing, we lift our hearts in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. I always tell people it's, it's, it's pointless sitting in a place of worship if he's not there. 
Come on. Let me tell you, if y'all can clap your hands louder for a pastor, a prophet, a man, but you can't put your hands together even louder for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that means I gotta ask you a quick question. Who is your God? Come on. I'm so sorry to tell you this, but this is true. Our applause must never be louder for man than God. Come on. Because man has no existence without God. Come on. Huh? Yes. So I want you one last time, put your hands together for the Holy Spirit that is in this room right now. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that is in this room right now. Hallelujah. 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 We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now you may be seated. Somebody may song tell you that this may sound crazy, but there are times where I go for breakfast or lunch and I'll go by myself, just me and him. And I actually book a table for two. And I would sit and I would get something to eat and I would literally be speaking to him. But if you are carnal minded, you would think I'm nuts. <laughs> but if you're a spirit, you don't understand that I'm speaking to the, the boss. Come on. My daddy. Yes. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, my mother is here. I, I remember there were many times uh, that I would have so many encounters. And my mom is here. I, on my very first encounter, I believe I was 12. And I was sitting at the ed edge of my mother's bed. I heard, the truth is, I heard her calling. But it's not that I acted as if I couldn't hear her. Or I was being disrespectful. It's just that I couldn't answer her. Because I was so in tune with the Lord. It was so bad to the point that I remembered her coming in the room, but what I did, what I, I couldn't do was to explain to her what I was doing, but because mommy was in the spirit then, as she is more now, mm -hmm. yes. she understood that what I was experiencing was an encounter. She's there, she'll tell you. And I remember that I was playing this song, He Knows My Name. And this entire time I'm playing the song, all I could keep, keep doing was crying. And I stood at the edge of the bed and I felt someone hugging me from behind. And I kept wondering, who is this? That was the very first time I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. Not because I found him. He found me. Yeah. And I accepted the call. And ever since then I've been uh, uh, going and living for him. For quite many millions of times but he has a way of reminding me of the importance of getting up Amen. somebody turn to your neighbor and say get up get up I want you to tell your neighbor get up get yeah. up and the reason why you're telling your neighbor get up is because you're speaking into their lives the things that they have fallen at and places they have fallen and they have been thinking that they just can't get up but tonight I want you to know tonight that you are getting up. Yes, amen. Y'all too quiet for me. I don't like amen. when y'all quiet. And so I want you to really and truly take this and place this not only in your subconsciousness, but in, on the, in the frontal lobe of, lobe of your mind. I want you to put it there. And I want you to understand that you who have fallen, me who have fallen, uh, God understands that we have fallen, but he cares more about are you getting up? Come on. Or are you going to stay down? Uh, you made mistakes, but are you getting up? Yeah. Or are you going to sit there in your mess? Because uh, uh, my grace is uh, what? Sufficient. Uh, his mercies are what? New every morning. So yesterday's mercies is different from today's mercy and tomorrow's mercy will be even different than today's. Huh? Yes. So I want you to put your right hand on your head and I want you to say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of revelation. But more so touch my mind. But more touch my mind. 
Let me not think religiously. Let me not think religiously. But let me think spiritually. But let me think spiritually. Give me the mind of Christ. Give me the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I want you to understand something here, and I promise you, I will not be long. I'll be quick, and I'll be out. I, I know you all have. It's Friday. People got stuff they want to do on Fridays. Take your time. But, but listen to me, and I want you to hear me well, because I want you to understand the importance of though you may have fallen, you have to get back up. Uh, he doesn't care that you have fallen. What he cares about is what are you doing when you have fallen? Are you getting up or are you staying in the place where you have fallen? And the truth of the matter is his love is vast. And his grace, there's no limits. There's no, because uh, his love is so big. Yes. My, I remember growing up when uh, my mom used to teach me a song, uh, 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 how big is his love? It, it, it is so wide, you can't get around it. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. And the truth of the matter is, I'm sorry to say that, but this is the truth. Now in churches today, they're preaching that there's a limit to God's love. Come on. And uh, it's the truth. And this is why people don't want to go to church because they have been preached at. Uh, <laughs> and the truth of the matter is this. The love of Jesus Christ. The word of God says this. And I want you to listen to this very carefully. And you have to understand. He loved the, John 3.16. For God so loved the, 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 the world that he gave his what? Only begotten son. For God to give himself. Come on. To humanity and to this world. It shows that his love is greater than our sin. For God to have given up someone dear to him. Himself. He must have loved us that much. So I want you to understand something. Because I want you to realize something. Because now the light of God shining through you. Must be so bright that people around you will just feel God's presence not because you open up your mouth but just the mere fact of your presence come on so when you roll up into a place or you pull up into a restaurant and you walk or even the hospital and you walk by someone or even in the store, wherever you are, and you walk by someone for them to experience God's presence yes. just by your presence. Come on. That is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be in a place where just by you walking by someone, they just say, I don't know what's going on, but for some reason... There's just something about you. Come on. Just when you walked by me, I felt such a presence. I felt so heavy in my spirit. But the moment that you walked by me, I just felt the love of Jesus Christ. Yes. That is what we are supposed to be. We are supposed to be the light of the world. Yes. Come on. The love of Jesus Christ shining on the inside of you so much to the point where even an atheist will be convicted. Come on. Oh, you all ain't talking to me. Come on. Even an unsaved individual will automatically feel the weight of God's glory yes. just by you walking by them. Just by you standing beside them. I'm going to be honest with you. Probably if the church would stop criticizing new people coming in the church, what they're wearing, what they look like, and start focusing on, ex on, 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 on giving the love of Christ, the churches will be filled. Come on. And the truth of the matter is we spend more time gossiping and talking about other people rather than building God's kingdom. Come on. There's a difference between being religious and being kingdom minded. You have to understand that and a, 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 this is why Jesus had to speak to the Pharisees and all these other guys. He tells them, he says, I did not come to mess up what's going on here, even the law of Moses. I came to fulfill it. In other words, Jesus is letting them know what you're preaching. I'm not against it. I just came to further what you're preaching because I want you to understand it's no longer about religiousness yes. and the spirit of religion. It's not about just being religious. It's about being kingdom minded. Yes. Understand? 
understanding that no matter who you are, what you are, where you came from, what you've done, the love of Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ matters. Amen. 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 My love that I have for you outweighs the wrong that you do. Come on. If you can give to the world what Christ has given to you, then we would have a better place. Nobody would be afraid to go to church anymore. Nobody would feel judged anymore. Because even though they may be struggling, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm so sorry to say, but majority of the people struggling is normally the people in church. And I'm going to tell you why. They focus on pointing fingers at people that they don't realize that people, there's, there's fingers pointing back at you. And you have to understand that, and, I, and one thing I've always said is this, for us to have a church filled with young people, these young kids don't want to be judged. They're already going through that in the world. Yeah. They, they want to be accepted. That's why I tell them all the time, I don't care if you're a prostitute, if you're gay, if you're a, a crooked killer, or whatever, you're a druggist, drug alcoholic, whatever it is, I'm going to tell you this, I ain't got nothing to give you, but I can only give you what God has given to me. And I want you to understand that what I'm giving to you is greater than money can buy. Uh, yes. Understand that uh, Peter said what? Silver and gold have I none, but such I have, I give to thee. Yes. What is it that Peter said that he had? He had the kingdom of God. Come on. On the inside of him. Why? Why is he talking like this? Because he's letting him know, say, I know you're asking for money. But the truth is you don't need money. Come what on. you need is healing and deliverance. What you need is breakthrough. What you need is for a supernatural kind of touch that money can't buy. Come on. Y'all are here. Y'all talking to me. Come on. You. So check this out. Check this out. Are you with me? So I want you to check this out. Let's look at the first scripture we're going to look at right now real quick. It's Proverbs and I want you to understand this. This is going to be powerful. This is Proverbs 24, 16. I want you to understand this. Proverbs 24, 16. This is for those who feel as if, man, I've made so much mistakes. I don't know if God will ever have any time for me or he got no spot for me. I want you to know that wherever you are as you're watching across the world, that God has a lot of time for you. Yes, amen. He has so much time for you that he sent his only begotten son. He has so much time for you that his love is quite vast. Uh, the sea represents the love of Christ. What does that mean? It means that, I love that, the depth, uh, yes, but Come check on. this one out. I'm going to mess you all up for two seconds. Understand that this entire world was actually sea, water. Well, what happened is that, notice that there were things built on water. So in other words, your sin, which is like things built on water, God is saying, my love is quite bigger, greater, Come powerful on. than on. the sin that you commit. Come on. Hey, Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on. So the love of Jesus Christ, every time you look at the water, think of his love. Just the other day, I heard that there was this big, uh, 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 this submarine thing went down with a few people. They went to go look for Titanic. something. The Titanic, I believe. Uh, come over here, son. Uh, the Titanic. And they went to go look for something dead, and they died. Oh. I'm going to tell you all something. Just stop trying to look at dead things. Come on. Come on. Because looking for that dead thing will cause death. Come on. I'm going to tell you that one more time. You're looking at your mistakes, which is death. And you're saying, God help me with this. But God is helping you. And the issue is, your mind has not been renewed. So you're looking back at every wrong you have done in the book. And you're focused on that dead thing. And this is why there's no change. Because you keep looking back at that thing in your life. Come on. And therefore now there is no what? Condemnation. To those that are in who? Christ, Christ Jesus. So when you're in him. There is no shadow of turning. There is no problems. There is no issues. There is no blemish. There, there is nothing that God can't handle. 
he has the entire world in his hand. You and me, I remember that song. He got the whole world in his hand. He got you and me and brother in his hand. He got my grandmother and my sister in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand. I remember growing up, my mom would, in, in junior church, we would, we, would, we would be singing these songs. But listen to me carefully. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it and, de and de displease him. And he turn away his wrath from him. I'm going to tell y'all something. When your enemy is getting beat, don't rejoice. Pray for them. Amen. Understand this. I don't want Uncle Malone to tell me that because uh, I've been messing up with the mic. He says you need to keep it close to you. <laughs> But understand this, when you see someone falling and they are falling in a way where it, it has gone global, don't look at it and laugh at it and mock what's going on. Instead, pray for that individual. Why? Because a righteous man falleth seven times. And though he may have fallen, God is saying that he ought to pick himself up. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you all something and I want you to understand. I don't know and I don't care what y'all done did, but God don't care about that. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. What he cares about, have you gotten up? Have you repented for it? Have you asked me for forgiveness for it? And what are you doing now concerning it? I'm not saying that God is saying you should keep sinning and doing whatever you want. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that his grace is sufficient. His love is bountiful and rich. But we also know that God is a God of mercy and love. But don't be fooled. God is not to be mocked. So we understand that though he forgives us of our sins, he is still saying, and listen to me carefully, and this is where I realize that sometimes young preachers, young ministers of the gospel, they preach and it sounds good, but they're actually preaching in error. And the reason why I say this is because we don't want to preach where people now feel it's okay to sin. It is Come not on. okay to sin. It's not okay to sleep around. It's not okay to have sex outside of your marriage. It's not okay to, 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 to lie, to steal. It's not okay for you to do these things. But what we want you to understand is there's a difference between sinning and presumptuously sinning. Come on. Where when you sin, it's from a place of you didn't mean it. It happened. You made a mistake. Now, what you're supposed to do is to repent for what you did. Meaning that you don't go back and do it. You repent for it. Now, presumptuously sinning is you knowing who God is. Merciful, loving, caring, kind. And you say, well, he will forgive me. It's not a problem. Come on. So it's fine. I can do it. He is God. He forgives he is merciful. He is just. He is loving. He is patient. He is kind. He is caring. He takes care of me. He is, but you forget that you ought to be in a place of repentance at all times. David had a weakness. His weakness was woman. And in his weakness, God still remained strong. But understand this. I've come to realize that in a person's weakness, sometimes, I'm sorry to say this, but this is the truth. If you don't believe me, go back and look in the book of Kings. I realize that in the weakness of a man, there are times where God places that weakness there. And the reason why he does it is because he wants man to understand that they are nothing without him. Come on. The only way for you to be in a place of repentance where you realize who God is in your life is every time when you stumble. 
Can I be honest with you? Yes. Are you stumbling? Are you stumbling? Do you yes. make mistakes? Huh? Yes. Good. It keeps you humble and grounded before him. Come Notice on. what I said. I'm not saying go and sin. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you find yourself making mistakes, because remember now, the Bible says this. The heart is deceitfully wicked in all its ways. So you have to understand that your heart can deceive you at any time. But you ought to understand by the spirit of God that your heart being, a, being at a place where it can deceive you, you ought to be, listen carefully, you ought to be renewed by the renewal of your mind. So in other words, you're not thinking the way you thought, which was when you were in the world. But when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the way you think is supposed to change. Come on. So you don't feel comfortable sinning. Yes, you feel comfortable repenting Come on. for the sin. Come on. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. I'm I, this is salvation here. And therefore now there is no, no satisfaction without salvation. Your salvation is important. I'm going to be honest with you. It's sad. But you're going to see many people who have preached the word for years. It's sad. Go to hell. But people who some of you look down on that is not even in church but is out there doing life and uh, you're going to see them in the line to heaven. Why? Because those that who have teached and who are teaching, God says what? It is going to be harsher judgment for them. Mm -hmm. For us. Mm -hmm. This is why I don't care if there's two people here or one. I tell you what God is saying and if you're upset it's fine but your blood won't be on my hands. Amen. Come on. I make sure that you have something. You have Jesus. In other words, every time that you make a mistake, you are convicted by who? The Holy Spirit, not by me. So every time you walk around, you're saying, hey, Jesus, I just messed up. God, forgive me. Daddy, I'm sorry, Lord. I should have dealt with this better, but they just... It just really ticked me off for two seconds. I, I just wasn't in the right frame of mind. For, help us, Lord. Help me. Can I be honest with you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. There's a difference between you making a mistake versus your heart is in a place where you know what the, the mistake is. In other words, you know what you're doing. But you're thinking you don't know what you're doing. And the truth of the matter is, uh, you can a person can be in a place where heart-wise, their heart posture is in the sinning that they're doing versus they didn't even realize what they did. And it's a truthful, honest accident. Come on. Mistake. You repent for it, you ask God for forgiveness, but you keep going. Don't do it again. I'll show you something. The Bible said this, the book of Psalms 51 verse 10. David said this, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of thine salvation. David prayed such a prayer because he saw what happened to his spiritual father Saul. And when he saw this thing, it bothered him. If this is what it's like for the Holy Spirit to leave me, I don't want it. You can take Abigail, you can take the concubines, you can take the wives, you can take the children, you can do anything, take the kingdom from me, but never take the Holy Spirit away from me. Can I be honest with you? Yes. In church today, the Holy Spirit has left many people in church, but they just don't know it. Come on. There's no more conviction. It's okay to do what you do. God will forgive me. It's okay. You're wrong. That's not salvation. That's not true salvation. That is not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a place of repentance always. What am I saying? When you get to a place where when you make a mistake, even, can I be honest with you? Yes. Do you feel bad when you make a, a mistake, honestly, right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Good. That means you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's simple. Some people say you don't have a conscience. No, it's not really conscience. You just don't have the Holy Spirit. 
You don't think. I don't think you have a conscience. You don't have a conscience that you are. You know, can I be honest with you? Yes. When you can sit and wound people. When you can sit and do evil. My friend, you don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Listen to this. I'm not lying. We have the word. If you look at John 14, 26. You get to understand. Jesus looks at the disciples, tells the disciples, I have to go because if I don't go, then the comforter won't come. The Holy Spirit will not come. And know this, the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will teach you what? All things concerning me. So the Holy Spirit is convicting you and me when we do wrong. Why? Because if the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, it's very hard for you to just sin and do whatever you want. The moment that you have been uh, accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, which you know that you didn't just get up and do it. It was the Holy Spirit that convicted your spirit to accept Jesus. For he introduced you to Jesus Christ. Hello? So the Holy Spirit met you, introduced you to Jesus. You felt the love of Jesus Christ. You were compelled in your spirit to give your life to him. Now you go, you give your life to him, you want to be baptized and can I be honest with you? Yes. There's no, forgive me for saying this, but there's no such thing as being backslidden. Come on. I'm going to help you. Help us. And I'll tell you why I say this. If a person is backslidden, it means that they never gave their life to Christ. Come on. Jesus never called them. They called themselves to him. Come on. Jesus. Can I be honest with you? Yes. Psalm 633. But seek ye first the what? Kingdom, kingdom of God. God. The issue is you're seeking religion, not with kingdom. Come on. Jesus. Help us. You're seeking religion. You're looking at theological things rather than spiritual things. Can I be honest with you? Be honest. <laughs> can, I, can, can I be honest with you guys? Yes. Majority of the time when you hear people talking about being backslidden, it's sad. But the truth of the matter is they never gave their life to Christ. They call themselves. Come on. Notice this. When you look at Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Can I be honest with you? Yes. The reason why some of you just can't find a way to seek him and you're not finding him is because he does not want to be sought by you. Mm. Come on. How can you seek someone that does not want to be sought by you? And the truth of the matter is when the Holy Spirit came upon you, that's when you started to seek him. Why? Because you were introduced to someone. Now you want to know more about them. Cool. It's not that seeking. Yes. Now you're seeking him. This is why the Bible says, seek and ye shall find. find. Knock and the door shall be open. Uh, you guys don't know the word? Let me do it again. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. The door is not open. It's not opening because you're knocking and you weren't invited to knock. Can I be Fine. honest with you? Yes. When you're living in your home and somebody walks up to your door, if they're uninvited, you will not open the door. Can I be honest with you? Yes. There are people who are uninvited beyond the veil and he will not come and show himself to you. I'm sorry. Moses was invited. Miriam was not. <laughs> Come on. Moses was invited. This is why the Israelites looked at Moses, mommy, and says to them, uh, Moses, go and talk to God. We don't want any issues with him. They were afraid. Why are you afraid? It's not God love. Because, it, listen to me and hear me well. Moses was invited, sought by God. The Israelites wasn't. That's why they couldn't just mm, go. Come on. They couldn't just go to the mountaintop to hear God. Come on. Can I be honest with you? Yes, be honest. This is, I'm sorry to say this. There are people that is just a little more favored and blessed than you are. And the truth of the matter is because God has uh, shown himself to them, just not to you yet. 
Come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He didn't say, but seek ye first heaven. There's a difference. Heaven and kingdom is different. You're helping us. Come on. It's, it's, it's way different. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are getting me hot. Amen. There's a difference. The kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violence take, they take it by? It didn't say the heavens suffereth violence. Heaven is a perfect place. The kingdom is the body of Christ. Come on. A representation of who God is. Come on. You guys, you, you guys are letting me sweat. So you have to understand when you talk about the kingdom of God, you're talking about the body of Christ and you're talking about the body of God. And when you talk about the kingdom of God, you have to understand the difference here. Heaven is uh, the realms of light. I'll just say that because this, that's what it is in the spiritual terminology. When you talk about Heaven, you're talking about a supernatural place. But when you talk about the kingdom of God, you're talking about the body. Come on. The kingdom of God. Can I tell you a secret? Yes. This is the truth. The reason why some people in church especially are struggling to make it financially is because they lack Kingdom mentality. There's a difference between asking for finances and asking the Lord to give you kingdom wealth. Which, which, which is the wealth God gives you, the grace for finances that he gives you is for the building up of his kingdom. That's why when you ask for money, nothing comes. Why? Because you're asking for a spiritual thing in the place of carnality. Without understanding anything. Hello? Are you sure you're here? Yes. So when you ask, thank you. When you ask for God to move in your life. When you ask God, you say, Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. But more so, I give you thanks that even now that you're moving concerning my family, concerning the children, concerning the things of, that you have given to me in my life, I want to thank you for it. It's good that you, you pray that, but it's, it, you're also lacking something. You're lacking the mentality of kingdom. Come on. Can I be honest with you? Yes. yes. Majority of the church, their focus is heaven. Nothing is wrong with that. But what about the kingdom of God? What about God's kingdom? What about you? What about the church? What about kingdom? Kingdom finances. Kingdom. You want, you want to build God's kingdom. David wanted so hard to build God's house. God looks at him and says, David, your hand is too dirty. There's too much blood on your hand. Listen. There was blood on David's hand because God told him to kill. David didn't commit murder apart from when he killed my guy for Bathsheba. He sent the soldier out, tell him, go out there, and he had him killed to take his wife. Yes. God took the child. Read the first and second kings. Read it, man. Read God's word. This is how you guys need to know things. That way, some of you don't just say, uh-huh, and you don't know what I'm saying. I could be teaching you foolishness, and you're saying, uh -huh, I will do it tonight. Then God slap you. Read the word. Every time I preach the word of God, I always want you guys to be convicted by God, by the Holy Spirit, to go back home and read his word. So that way when you read, you're like, huh. So, and can I be honest with you? Yes. Majority of the time, listen carefully. I, I want you guys to practice from tonight. Those who are on YouTube and IG, I forgot to welcome you. Welcome. I love you all. But I, I want to challenge you. Whenever you read God's word, get a book. My wife does it. She does it all the time. It's crazy. I just love uh, when she does it. But what she does, she reads the word and then 
what, would, what does she do? She writes questions. But she has a cheat code. Her cheat code is that her husband is a prophet. So she comes to me and she will say, babe, uh, so I don't want my husband right now. I just need the prophet now. <laughs> and nothing is wrong with that because she's saying the right thing. That means she has a, a, a sense of spiritual things. She understands who her husband is, and then she understands that uh, the prophet of God is. So what she does, she asks the question, and then she goes into it. And then I break things down to her, and by the time I break it down to her, she sees and hears confirmation on what I said to her. Can I be honest with you? Stop hanging with people that don't know God. You can't try to achieve in something, in some area of your life, and you're not hanging with the right people that has what you need. Come on. If you want wealth and prosperity, God, to open doors for you financially, stop hanging with broke people. I'm serious. I'm sorry. It's the truth. Hang with people that can uplift you. Hang, can I be honest with you? Yes. When I was younger, I, I wasn't around young people. I was around older people. Young people was around me. Come on. Ask her. My mother is right here. Uh, when, before I migrated from Jamaica and I came here, uh, I was taking care of the old people. I walk, my mother and I, we walked to church. Other older women of God, they would walk to church, the mothers of the church. But my mother was known as the mother of the church. But there were people, other older mamas that were there. And when they came, they would just look for me. I would greet them, hug them, kiss them on the cheek. Well, I tell them, how are you? Ask them how they're doing. And at the end of service, they would just say, Judy, I just love you. And I hug them. And then when I left, they cried. Why? Because someone saw them. Come on. Someone honored them. Can I be honest with you? Yes. A lot of times, some of you don't understand the power of honor. Come on. You don't know how to honor people. You don't understand that even my little nephew... He can teach me some things. The other day I was, uh, I, I was driving this, my, my vehicle. <laughs> Listen, I know you guys look at me and you say I'm young. Yes, I'm 29. But if you, if you know me in the spirit, I'm an old guy. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a joke. A serious joke. My son is 14. My son looks at me. And I had a problem with the car. I just, you know, I, I took my car in and they gave me this newer car. I told them, I don't want that. Can you, do you not have something a little more simple? I want simple, simple. And they're like, no, this is what we have. They gave me a newer car. Uh, it's a loaner, it's not mine. And <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm pressing this thing. And my son is like, dad, this is how you do it. Bang, boom, boom, it works. I'm like, Jesus and I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, what I'm used to is what I have power with and in. What I'm not used to, I don't have power. Can I be honest with you? Yes. When this is religious minded people, because you're so used to one thing and you're going the same way throughout your life, you have a problem adjusting now. Come on. Yet God says, for I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if God is saying he's the same yesterday, when why do the Pharisees have a problem with Jesus being who he was and who he is and who he will always be? Back then, they had a problem with Jesus healing the sick, casting out devils. Pharisees is looking and saying, uh, you're, you're, you're healing on the Sabbath day. You're doing this. You're doing that. Jesus had to look at them and talk to them and tell them, listen, I came to fulfill the law. Jesus then looks at them and is telling them that what he's doing, he's supposed to do it. Do you not know who I am? Then, then Jesus don't even waste his time to even talk to them. Why? Because they had no insight and foresight. They had no revelation of who he was. Are you hearing me? Yes. The issue is when you're walking with God or learning to walk with God, your focus is still theological. You're still looking at the Bible and you're reading it and you're saying, okay, so this is it. No, that's not it. What you're reading was something that was revealed by God to man to write. So there's something deeper than what you're reading in the word of God. This is why when you read a scripture one time, read it again tomorrow. You will not get the same revelation. Come on. Why? Because God is bigger than what you're reading. It's bigger. 
So when you read the word of God, you're reading from a place of, I know already. This is why I, when, I, when I meet prophets of God and I come across with them and I meet them, I never behave as if I know anything. Ask, ask my family. I don't do that. I behave as if I don't know anything. I sit, I listen. Every time Prophet Lobi is teaching the word, I look, I'm listening to what he's saying. I get the Bible, I read my Bible, I'm looking at it, I'm like, Jesus, is this so? And when I read it and I'm like, oh my God, I never thought about it this way. But then I remembered who I am. And I say, okay, Lord, now I see what you're doing. You're sharpening me. Because the more you're sharpened, is the more that you realize that you will experience great big things. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So this is the truth now. You are stopping yourself from experiencing God's best for your life. When you reject the things of God, though it doesn't make sense to you. Can I be honest with you? Yes. He uses the foolish thing to confound the wise. So there are dumb things to you that just don't make any sense. It makes a lot of sense to God. Come on. But when you're not in the spirit, you're thinking, no, this, I don't think this is right. And another thing, I don't know who I'm speaking to on this, but I know I'm speaking to somebody. Many of you have been into churches that abused you big time. And the way they abused you, you even now have problem trusting other men and women of God. And I want you to know this. The devil wants to use that same thing that you struggled with then, what you experienced then, yeah. to distract you from where you're going, where God has for you. This is why people, they demonize prophets of God that are teaching ancient things. When a prophet say certain things, they are demonizing them. Yet it's biblically sound. But you're not spiritually minded. Come on. You are earthly and carnally minded. The way you think is a problem. But the way you think is not a problem to you because you've been thinking that way forever. This is why you can't treat, you can't teach old dogs new tricks, my mother would tell me. Can I be honest with you? Yes. What God wants to do in your life is greater than what you're thinking he wants to do in your life. Amen. The truth is, the way you're thinking, he has bypassed your thought. This is why the word says, for his ways is not our ways. So what you're thinking, the picture you have been painting, it's not him. You're looking and you're saying, but God said, even speaking in tongues is a problem to some. And by the way, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. And again, you guys really need to know the word of God. I don't tell people know God for yourself anymore because I realize that what I'm saying is foolishness. And I understand and I'll explain to you. When you tell somebody to know God for yourself, it's good that they read the word, but not everybody has the depth of experiencing God for them to know who God is. So, knowing God for yourself, I don't say that anymore. I used to say that. But I've realized based off of the teachings of what God has been giving to me, showing me, I realized that the right thing to say is get into a ministry that has the fire of God, Amen. that has sound teaching, that teaches you the undiluted word of God. Amen. That way, your life will be complete. Hello? Hello. Is this good? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. So understand this. What God wants to do with you is greater than what you're thinking he wants to do with you. Can I be honest with you? Yes. What you're thinking that God wants to do in your life, you have already limited him. I remember my mother will tell you, my mom is sitting right there. The, the doctor tried to say that uh, she, <laughs> that one hit you. <laughs> Listen, my mother will tell you, she's right there. Uh, the doctor told her, I, you know,
know, you, are, you, you have to put a pacemaker in your heart and you, this thing is going to happen because your heart is this way and that. I looked at, I, I, I remember I was living in Vegas, my wife will tell you. I was, at the time, I, I, I was saying, I said, what manner of nonsense is this? <laughs> Why is I said, mom, don't worry about this. But listen to me carefully. My mother knows who I am in God. Well, she raised me. It's her product. I am, I am, I am, I am a product of her hand. Amen. Right? Yes. Uh, my kids will tell you, they have not experienced grandma in the spiritual aspect yet. That's because grandma is in her days of, uh, you know, she's chilling now. Because I make sure she rests. Amen. But the thing about it is this. I looked at my mother and I, I told her, listen carefully, I gave her a spiritual instruction that made no sense to her. My mother stood, my mother said, uh, what, what, what do you want me, what, what, what should I do? I said, mom, listen to me, this is what I want you to do. I gave her instructions that the Lord told me, not I saying it to her. The Lord told me what to tell her. I said, you're going to do this. You're going to pray like this. You're going to take the, the word of God. You're going to do this. You'll pray this prayer. You're going to read this. And God said, it's done. My mother says, done? Yeah. I say, you sure? I said, I'm only telling you what God said. Amen. And my mother stood on it. My mother obeyed every instruction. The issue is why some of you don't experience God's blessing when a prophet prophesied because you guys don't listen. Come on. That's why some people watch somebody that is quick to call somebody a false prophet. Watch that. Why is he a false prophet? Why is she a false prophet? Well, they said this and nothing happened. Yes, but what was the conditions? Come on. What didn't you do that you were supposed to do? Come on. What if my mother didn't listen to what God said through me? Then she probably she wouldn't have been here. My mother listened. I, told, I, I asked her, I told her, within eight days, everything will change. By the time you get, and she said, you know, in eight days, I'm actually going to the doctor. I said, well, there it is. I didn't know. I just prophesied to her. I'm just telling her what God is saying. She goes back to the doctor. The doctor said, I don't know what you've been doing, but keep doing it. We don't need to do anything with your heart. Your heart is good. Amen. Amen. My wife will tell you, when it comes to mommy, when it comes to my children, when it comes to her, listen, one time I would stress like crazy. Now I just tell them what to do. They don't listen. I get upset. I said, you see how you're not listening. I'm telling you this is what you need to do. If you don't listen, I get upset. I say, okay, this is foolishness. I say, okay. But I'm upset not because, uh, you know, uh, I'm upset because you will cost me something if something happens to you. So I told my mother, I said, do this, obey, obey God. My mom, immediately, she didn't even ask why. Why do I have to do that? No, 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 because she knew who I am. She knows. Woman, you are powerful. But you are powerful in God's eyes. Uh, and, and the truth of the matter is, I, when it comes to mothers, I don't play games. Mothers have birthed forth great men. Every great man today is because of a woman. This is why I encourage women. My wife will tell you, and my son will tell you, my, the kid, my daughter, she's young, but she knows. Mom is unhappy, everybody is unhappy. <laughs> Before it was, I don't care. <laughs> but now the, the more you grow in the Lord, you, God really does slap you. You need to fix this. If she's unhappy, that's a problem. Fix it. Now I know. And I didn't have a father to teach me. But he has been my father that has taught me. Amen. Amen. And my dependency is on him. Amen. I was telling my son the other, I think it was last night, uh, both him and uh, my spiritual son, Jojo. I said to him, I said, you know, I don't have anybody that I can run to and talk to. You know how you guys have me. I don't have somebody like that to run to and talk to. All I have is Jesus. They looked at me crazy. They were like, Dad, are you serious? I said, yeah. 
When I need to cry, vent, I just go into my prayer room. I close my door. I'll cry to him. By the time I'm done crying, I, I, the, the Lord speaks to me. He tells me what to do. He said, don't worry. You're just going through this because you have to have a testimony. It hurts. But understand that Jesus too was hurting in the wilderness. And you will feel some pain. But just remember that I got you. I'll never give you much more than you can bear. Can I be honest with you? Yes. When you find yourself where you get up and a scripture comes to mind, it is your spirit that is speaking. God is speaking to your spirit. And, and with the scripture that comes when you get up, that is God speaking to you, reminding you of who he is in your life. Come on. When you get up and you feel a song and, and you get up and you just said, oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us. Through all trials, you've made us victorious. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Why are you singing those songs? Because God is reminding you through your spirit, man, who he is in your life. Amen. Amen. When you have fallen, get up. When you get up, start moving. Though you have fallen, God wants you to arise. Amen. Don't stay down just because you're focused on what you have done wrong and the things you, the mistakes you have made. Don't focus on that. The Lord wants you to focus on him. He is the lifter up of your head. He is the one that uplifts you. Understand that as you walk with him, it is a lonely walk. One day, we'll, I'll do a, 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 little, uh, t a little teaching on that, walking with the Lord. It's, a, it's honestly lonely. I, wouldn't, I, 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 I always tell people, be careful what you ask for. Because what you ask for, you'll get it and more. It is a very lonely walk. There are some things that I see other people, they can do, they can do whatever they want, but when it comes to walking with the Lord, it is extremely lonely. There are people that God doesn't even want to get married. There are some people that get to be married, but some just don't get to be married. Because God says, for me and my sake, I don't want you to be distracted, no marriage. So he cuts that. There are some people, listen to me carefully, there are some people that though they're married, their wives are suffering, their husbands are suffering, and it's not suffering for a bad cause. They're going through so much where as their spouse is elevating, and they're, they have to elevate as well. True. So as God is doing something in their life, they have to adjust. Because I don't want to be the anchor for this man of God. I don't want to be the anchor for this woman of God. I can't afford for me to be a distraction to the will of God for his or her life. That's why I tell people all the time, don't run down pastors and prophets and these things talking about you want to get married. Do you know what you're signing up for? Oh, I want a nice man of God that preach and is so powerful, anointed. Well, make sure that you can differentiate the man of God and your husband. Because you have to remember that though he's a man of God, he may preach Listen to this. Some of you may laugh. Some of you may judge me after. Though he may finish preaching, you better make sure as a wife you're ready to go home and give him sex. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. This is the thing. You guys put ministers of the gospel on a pedestal. Stop it. We're human. My son, when, we, when I go when I go home, my guy may want to play video games. I have to take off the suit. And the moment, I, the moment I leave this building, I'm daddy. I'm not Prophet Junior. That's not, no. I'm daddy. My daughter needs me. My son needs me. My, I'm husband. Uh, hello. Yes. Some of you guys, the reason why some of you get so, uh, uh, what do you call it, judgmental to men of God, women of God, is because you put them on a pedestal. Stop doing it. Come on. They're human like you. They bleed like you. They yes. make mistakes like you. Come on. They are not perfect beings. Listen to me. We are imperfect beings, though we serve a perfect God. Come on. Amen. 
Hear me. I tell people all the time, these, some people, they, some women, they want to marry great men. Do you know the cost of walking with a, a very great man? Men want to walk with great women. Do you know the cost of walking with a great woman? Are you okay that she makes more money than you? Though you are supposed to be the head, though you are supposed to lead, are you okay that you are not the one bringing in most money? Will it bother you as a man? Will it stunt your manhood? Will it stunt how you think as a man? Will your mind be in arrears? Or will you have peace because you know who you are in Christ? Yes. Though you make more money than me, baby, I'm the boss. I'm the king of the house. The king of the jungle. Listen, I'm sorry to say but listen to the truth. You have men that behave like boys. It's true. They have problems with women. Why should your wife who makes more money hide Cartier and hide Gucci and Louis Vuitton and hide a $50,000 bracelet? Why? She must feel good that she buy herself that. Can I be honest with you? Yes. The mere fact that she still honors you. She still honors you in the house. You're still the head. She reminds you that though she has more money than you, to her, you are the one that is the breadwinner in this house. So technically though I'm working and I have millions, baby, this money is yours. You tell me what to do with it. But yet you have a problem with so it's, it's two-way street. Thank you, boss. I'm being honest. Men has lost, and it's the truth, and I close with this. Men has lost who they are in Christ. And the reason why I say this, mommy, is this. Imagine God created us men to be leaders, kings, head. But yet we walk in a way where women are now the head. Can I be honest with you? This is why women sometimes they don't they say, I don't want no man for me to be as my I'll do it on my own. The truth is men has failed. Yet God made us first. Yet God created us first. And women came from us. Where in the Bible tell you that God told Eve not to touch the fruit? He never told Eve. He told Adam. Amen. Adam did not tell Eve and instruct Eve not to eat. Amen. Come on. Come on. You're teaching. Come on. I guess I'm teaching the wrong people. I'll stop. Teaching. Okay, let's stop now. God never told Eve. When the Bible told it that God told Eve, God never told Eve. God looked at Adam. It was Adam's responsibility to tell Eve. This is why the snake, the devil, Lucifer, he went and spoke to who? Eve. Why? Because he knew Adam did not tell Eve. Yes, let me get them and I know how to let man fall. If I let the woman fall, he will automatically fall. Woman, listen to me well. You must be woman of prayer. Yes, yes. sir. Pray, be mothers of Zion. Pray, be prayer warriors while your husband sleep, while your children sleep. Be up and pray. Pray. Listen to me. The Lord spoke to me. Uh, what day is it today? On Tuesday, he spoke to me. I'd say on Friday, I want you to remind them and tell them that the woman, there's an attack I saw coming. And I saw a lot of women in marriages. Literally, I saw them, it's not, in, not only in marriages, but in ministry. I saw them falling. And the reason being is because some women have forgotten who they are and their place. No, I didn't say all. Some. Come and on. what the Lord showed me was that he is, uh, listen carefully. Marriages is of God. But I'm sorry to say this, not all marriages is of him. There's, you can't tell me that you're going to get married to this guy because he just looks good. Because that's not enough. Uh, looks can pay bills. Looks can pay car note, house note. Looks can't pay these things. So if you're looking at buff, tall, uh, muscular, has a Rolls Royce and drive, lives in a mansion, I want that. That is God for my life. The devil is a liar. Can I be honest with you? Yes. Where were you when God told Hosea to marry a prostitute? 
Some of you, you would have looked at Prophet Hosea and said, I'm not going back to this man's church. You're crazy. You got married to a prostitute. You're not of God. So you would have demonized him. Yet God told him. What about that other prophet, uh, mom, who was this other prophet again? I don't remember. God told him to go out there and preach naked for three years. <laughs> preach naked. <laughs> huh? Everybody is supposed to see my jewels. Huh? All of this. Me. Where were you when Jonah was running from Nineveh? <laughs> running from preaching the word. Where were you? Many of you. Like the people in the boat. I'm glad they were actually honest. They started throwing everybody off the boat. They looked at Jonah and said, my guy, it's, it's really you. Hey, let's throw him over. <laughs> Is that how they say in Africa? Let's throw him over. <laughs> Let's throw him off. <laughs> Jonah said, listen, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to go. It's me. I'm the cause. Where were you when God was telling the men of God to go to places to... Can I be honest with you? Yes. The issue is some of you don't know that there are places that God wants you to hear his voice, but you're so focused on being comfortable. That you don't realize that a part of discomfort is a part of you experiencing him. Come on. I don't need to move nowhere, baby, to hear God. I don't need to go nowhere. Well, if that was the case, then why did Moses have to go to the mountaintop to hear him? He never heard him in the tents. He heard him on the... God said, I want you to come hither. So you want God to come to you. So who's the boss? Him or you? Him. Oh. Come you on. go to him. Yes, Lord. This may sound crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, okay, the Lord just told me don't say that. Okay. <laughs> don't say it. Okay, Lord. Minds of Christians is wicked. <laughs> it's bad. It's true. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. When you walk with the Lord, it's lonely. And it's lonely because you really don't get people to be around you on this walk. And you have to be okay with being alone. And the reason why you have to be okay with being alone because you have to understand that though you may see everybody going down this aisle, you have to be okay with being the only one going this way. Yes. Come on. I never had a problem. I'm, I'm, I don't say this arrogantly. I say this with confidence. As a Jamaican man, I never had an issue leading. I never had an issue following people. I mean, I don't do this click thing, running around with this pastor, that pastor, and sitting on phone doing foolishness. I ain't got time for that. I don't even sit and talk to no bunch of pastors on no phone call and doing this and all that foolishness. I ain't got time for that. I mean, I, I make sure that I stay my time with my wife, my kids, my family, my home. My, 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 my other son will tell you he comes to the home he was there last night we enjoyed life I have no time sitting on the phone talking gossiping of foolishness some of you you talk too much your tongue is as long as the river <laughs> you talk talk you gossip you talk about people yet you don't understand that every time you put your mouth on God's anointed you're cursing yourself you're wondering why things are taking so long to happen it's because you spent so much time talking about sister Sue's eyelash that was hanging so what you don't understand is you're seeing eyelash hanging and you're talking about Sister Sue, yet Sister Sue is seeking God's face. And this is why the words say, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Listen to me. You're talking about people that God is thinking about. Yeah. Come on. So your time is focusing on other people's stuff rather than looking at yourself in the mirror. Rather than just looking and saying, I need to work on some things. I need to change some things. Hold your head up. Focus on building. I just started following this great woman of God from Africa. I just put Auntie Helen and I just tell my wife that this, uh, this woman of God, I love her dearly. Uh, she's, a, she's, a, she's, a, uh, she's very uh, anointed woman of God. But God gave her the grace for business. I love, listen, can I be honest with you? Yes. I love strong women. I don't feel intimidated by a woman that makes money. Amen. I actually like it. I think it's really nice. 
I would say another word, but too much Christians, you know, people are very hyper spiritual. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I love it. You know why? Because whenever I see women prospering, it reminds me that a man has done well. Amen. Think about it. Did not woman come from man? Uh -huh. So if a woman is prospering, she's a product of a man. Amen. Hello? Hello. When I see, I, I, I just love it. This woman of God, she is, when I tell you, big time. She is very prosperous. She, 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 she ministers, she preaches, she teaches. But at the end of the day, she, God uses her in, you know, in business. She has business. Very prosperous and blessed. And every time I look at it, I always say to myself, I said, hey, Jesus, it's amazing to see it. And it encourages me. I was telling my wife, I said, baby, this just reminds me of you. Because my wife is a businesswoman. She knows her, I don't worry about business. She, I focus on souls. Amen. She Amen. does business. Amen. That's why I look this good. <laughs> she does her thing. I don't worry about these things. I just have to listen to her. Some, some things, <laughs> some things, some things she'll tell you, like she tell me all the time. She said, you see how you like spending. If I spend, I'm in trouble. I have to make sure she's sweet up and she's nice and then I can spend. That way, whenever she is nice and she's smiling, she's, I can be able to do what I want. <laughs> Mommy's shaking her head. <laughs> I'm telling you. Once she's happy, I'm good. I can sneak. <laughs> I, I, guess I just have to make sure it was on sale. <laughs> Babe, this was a thousand, but I got it for 200. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Smart. I'm telling you. I'm serious. But it's good because it balances me. Amen. Because you know, you if you have two buffoons <laughs> leading the house, it's a problem. You don't want two spend drifters. If you have two spend drifters, you won't have a home. If it was up to me, forgive me for saying it, but this is true. If it was up to me, this yard man, Jamaican man. I would have been probably living in a local hut or something. <laughs> but because of my wife, she, teach, she always tells me, baby, this is how you do it. And she teaches me. Because I never had somebody to teach me. One of the worst things is wildfire. You can have fire, but if it's not controlled, you'll burn people. Hello? Hello. God has been so good. I have not heard any wildfire in California. God has been good. Amen. Now you know why. There has not been uh, any heat heat. It's just been cold in Cali. Come on. Hello. I told you this cold in, this cold in Cali is spiritual. There have been people praying and crying out to God. Father, no more fires. So what did God do? God kept Cali cold. Come on. Hey. Come on. The prayers of the righteous man availeth much. Stand to your feet. Uncle Malan, play something light for me, please. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. A woman of God, you just lift your hands at the right time. <laughs> Prophesy. Listen to me. Quick question. I don't know why I'm seeing a little girl beside you. Yeah. You see my daughter. Okay. Prophesy. Okay. Prophesy. Can I prophesy to you? Yes, prophesy. Oh, okay, lift your hands to heaven. I'm going to give you time. I'm going to receive download. Prophesy. Play, 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 play that song. Where's my wife? Only take that mic and just sing from back there. You know, this is our song. Well, your song. I want you to lift your hands to heaven. I want you to just worship him. I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. Love upon him right now. Thank him. Father, thank you for being God. Father, help me in this time and in this season of my life. Father, though I may have fallen, Father, I thank you. You're the one lifting me up. Pray right now. Pray, pray. Open your mouth. Father, lift me. Lift me. Raise me. Lift me up, Lord. Lift me up, Lord. Come on, somebody pray, pray, pray. Yes, 
Come on, come on, hallelujah. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Leshando yorobosa. Rabanda bandiyando yorobosa. Breathe in me. So I'm seeing a little girl beside you. Yes, Lord. Prophesy. When I see this little girl, I saw a very heavy grace upon her for academical excellence. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. But the issue that has been happening is that the enemy has been trying to attack this little girl's mind. Yes, yes. Prophesy. I, I love her. Prophesy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so what I saw... Is this pretty beautiful baby girl? Ooh, yes, Lord. Prophesy. And when I saw her, I saw father in life, but father out. Yes, prophesy. And the truth prophesy. of the matter is, this thing has been heavy on your heart because the truth is, you want her father to be around, but the father is not there. Yes, prophesy. Prophesy. And this thing has been a burden to you because in the spirit, I saw things taken from you. Things that you, you 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 really put your hands to because the truth is your hands is blessed. Prophesy. There's business that I'm seeing on you. Yes, yes, and I saw business, but every time you put your hand to touch things to build, it breaks. Prophesy. Prophesy. This evil Prophesy. spirit try I've been messing in your life big time. It's been Prophesy. affecting you. Prophesy. But tonight, God says to tell you. That every evil forces of darkness that's been attacking your life and the, your daughter's life is being broken now I in Jesus' you. name. Yes. Prophesy. When you see a woman of God crying like this, you know God has, has yes. is speaking to her now. Yes. I saw you crying out to God. You are weeping before God as you're weeping now. What's going on with this mic? Uh, turn, give me volume, please. Give this mic volume, please. Yes, there we go. What I saw in the spirit, it brought me uh, deep down inside because I saw you weeping, crying out to God Prophesy. for change. Prophesy. And while you were crying out to God for change, I saw this little girl and I saw you holding on to this child. And then I saw the enemy trying to attack you in that home that you're in. And the truth of the matter is you're an intercessor. Prophesy. When it comes to intercession, you don't play with prayer. But the enemy is trying to shut your mouth. Prophesy. I saw a spirit of tiredness. A spirit of that heaviness that would come at times. Where even when you're praying, you feel tired. You feel blue. Then strength will come after. 
But listen to me from tonight. Yes. Even the way you pray is about to change. I saw fire coming upon you. Yes. Fresh fire coming upon you. Professor. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I don't know why I'm seeing this, but the Lord told me we need to pray. There's another woman that I saw connected to you. I, I don't know who this woman is. Prophesy. I don't know if this is a sister or what. Prophesy. But I saw this woman and the Lord told me we need to pray for her concerning relationship and health. Yes, God. Prophesy. Okay. Because what I saw in the spirit was when it comes to relationship, the women of the family struggle big time. Yes, God. When yes, it comes God. to relationships. Prophesy. And the truth of the matter, there's been an anti marital spirit running in the family. Prophesy. Relationships Prophesy. come, but it breaks and it's destroyed. Prophesy. Things look like it's about to happen, but nothing happens. You're talking right. Uh, I like her. Prophesy. <laughs> but the Lord told me to tell you tonight that from tonight, the Lord says to tell you every evil spirit that has been following you. Yes. That has caused you to even not have good relationship. Can I be honest with you, woman of God? Even when it comes to relationship with other women in terms of being a sister or a sister in Christ. Yes. It's a problem too. Yes, Lord. You're talking right. Because the truth of the matter is you're a very strong woman. No nonsense woman. And you don't Prophet like foolishness. But the truth of the matter is, listen to me carefully. The Lord told me to tell you this. Hallelujah. Hear what God told me to tell you, woman of God. The Lord told me to tell you this. Prophesy. He's shifting some things around, especially in the area of business for you. Yes, Lord. Prophesy. Okay. Because I saw another woman in the area of business that I saw with you. Yes, Lord. I don't know if this is some partnership thing or this is somebody that you know that is or what, but the Lord told me that he's sending you help. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? He's sending you help. Because the truth of the matter is, finances has been dried up in your life, but God told me from tonight, everything will change. Professor! Professor! I saw you giving. Uncle Chance, this is sad. You're not lying. I saw her giving, 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 but when it was time for her to seek help, who she went to, nobody helped her. Professor. She gave, 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 gave. They give this, give that. She would give. But when it's time that she needed, nobody. Professor. But listen to me. The Lord told me that he is giving you double what you gave. Yes. Professor. Because in the spirit, I saw you giving, but who you were giving to, I saw you giving, doing a lot of giving. But I saw that what you were giving, it literally was not fertile ground. That's why you weren't seeing anything coming back to you. Are you hearing me? Listen to me, guys. Don't be emotional givers. Come on. Don't be emotional givers. Don't say you want to give just because you hear that everybody is giving. That's it. You guys are missing. Come on. You're missing God. Don't do that. Listen to me, woman of God. I don't know what's going on in the ear of living, but the Lord told me I saw keys in your hand. Thank you, Lord. But the way the way that I saw the key coming in your hand, it was crazy because somebody blessed you. Oh God! And when you. they blessed you with some finances, I saw that you put money to get somewhere. Okay. And I don't know what. Do you have any connections at all in Atlanta or something? Oh my God! Do you have Do you have anybody in Atlanta or anything? You, you don't have anyone in. The, I want you to speak to me. Do you know anybody that you, you connect with anyone in Atlanta? Because I saw you in Atlanta. Oh my God! I don't, I don't know why I saw you there, but I I saw you in Atlanta. I saw you flying, and then you went to Atlanta. When I, then when I, now, now I saw you flying somewhere and I saw you Texas. Jesus. Okay. And Prophesy. the Lord told me, 
she's looking. Wait, what? <laughs> Woman of God, I'm only telling you what he's showing me. Because I saw you flying Texas. And the Lord told me to tell you this. These doors, I saw three doors opening for you. And God says, get ready for Texas. And God said, get ready also for Atlanta. I'm giving you connections for Atlanta. Yes. And I'm giving you favor in Texas. Prophesy. What's going on? Why? Well, tell me what's going on. Tell Pastor, Texas came to my mind. I'm not playing, Lord. Prophesy. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? Say with it, say with it Lord. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? Prophesy. I'm going to be honest with you. On a serious note. Do your big one, Lord. I'm going to tell you this. Though you're here, I saw you actually searching for answers. She's here, but I saw her searching, looking. Have you seen somebody looking for car keys? I saw her looking like that. Because the truth of the matter is, you're at a place where you're just, you just need guidance. Yes, God. Of what to do next. Yes, God. Are you hearing me? Yes. And the truth of the matter is, the Lord told me to tell you that right now you're in a season of California. Okay, Lord. Oh, Hear it. Prophesy. And I want you to get ready. I, I like her. <laughs> and I want you to get ready because the Lord says, what he's given you in California, Prophesy. you're only here for a time, but I saw a shift coming. Oh, Jesus. And oh, this shift God. is going to come where I saw you traveling and get ready for texas oh god are you hearing me yes lord are let you your purpose you, will be done are you period. sure all right she hearing me so i'm just telling her what god is telling me let's go lord period <laughs> professor i like <laughs> that's what i like when people talk to me let's go I'm, I'm lord. Oh so i want you to get ready now listen to me now now i'm going to talk to you about this spiritual thing that is very important take me lord because now I'm seeing a heavy anointing, a prophetic anointing upon you to yes. see. Yes. But the enemy has been trying to block your eyesight in the spirit. Let's go, Lord. And is trying to blind you from seeing the things of God. Jesus. Because the truth Prophesy. of the matter is, you being in California is a miracle and a blessing. But in the same breath, God told you to. And it was by faith. Prophesy. So what God wants to do for you tonight, God is setting you up big time. Go, let's go. To put you out. Yes, Not in a bad way, in a good way. Because you've been crying and asking God for him to really bless you so that you can be a blessing. Yes, sir. Because yes. I saw you helping single mothers yes, sir. with kids. Yes, sir. And I saw you feeding people. Yes, but I'm going to tell you this. Be careful of what you speak. Because you have a big heart, and I want you to not speak more than what God wants you to say. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so I want you to listen now. What God wants to do in your life is greater than what you're thinking he wants to do in your life. Because God is about to set you up big time. And the doors that are about to be open for you, even people in family won't believe it. Professor. Because Uncle Chance, right now, there are people waiting for her to crash and burn. Yes. Waiting. Lie, Lord. Because I saw her on the phone asking for help. Professor, you ain't lying. Professor. And there's a thing of get your life together. Because huh. you're doing all this, going this, looking this prophet, that prophet. Talk Lord, about help this me. and that. Uh, it's what I'm saying. It's yes, it's true. But the Lord, the Lord told me to tell you tonight that he's setting you up big time. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Prophet <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus name. Amen. I thank you, Father, for fresh fire upon this woman of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for clarity tonight. Yes. Somebody say, thank you for clarity, Lord. Thank you for clarity, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I run to you. Hallelujah. I, I, I. I want somebody to lift your voice. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of delay. Every spirit of delay. That has been upon my life. That has been upon my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be destroyed now. Be destroyed now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No longer. No longer will delay be my portion. Will delay be my portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Come Jesus on, open your mouth and pray. Hey, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every spirit of delay. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Every spirit of delay on my life. Every spirit of delay on my life. now by fire and by force. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Father, every spirit of delay. Whatever that's been standing in my way to delay me from where you need me to be according to your will, let it be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray, pray, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Every spirit of delay. Over my family, over my finances, over my business, over my organization, over my ministry, be destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus, by fire and by force, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No longer will I be delayed mode. No longer will I be delayed. No longer will the business be delayed mode. No longer will be. Come on, somebody pray the Holy Ghost. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Razoko Toromiaze, Oz Akasi, Ria Bakasa, Bakos Toria, T. Atara, Zok Diana Makas, Oko Lia Mak. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every evil forces of darkness. Every evil forces of every darkness. Every spoken word. Every spoken that word. That has been spoken over my life. That is life. not from you. That is not from you. To delay me. To delay me. From your perfect will. From your perfect for will. For my life. life. Catch, fire. Catch, fire. Catch 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 fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Zeken dianama kastia rabako. Rukozitianama. Ekata rabaka sete. Rokositiana makasti. Ezeketiana makosto. Zoko diana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. E shanda bandi ando yerobosa. Hallelujah. 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 I know I've never done this before, but I love praying. I love that. Yes. I like that. Keep that song. Are you ready to do warfare? Yes. I've just given you a taste. Yes. Yes. Zina manda bakashando yerobosa, rabande be kotola pa zina makata le pandi bi ando yerobosanda yaraba. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every enemy that is waiting for me to fall, may them fall in the mighty name of Jesus. May confusion be in the camp of the enemy. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the earth. May the earth open and swallow my enemies. Open and swallow my enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Death that is waiting for me to fall. Death that is waiting for me to May fall. May they fall. May they fall. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. They wait for my soul. 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 But Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May your will be done. 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 According to my life. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands to heaven. Father, let your will be done. Say, Father, let your will be done. Father, let your will be done. Concerning my life. Concerning my life. Even now. Even now. Let the weight of your glory let the weight of your glory be and rest upon me now be and rest upon me now in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus may fresh fire may fresh fire fall upon me fall upon me in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus let your glory fall let your glory fall let your power fall let your power fall let your glory fall let your glory fall let your power fall let your power fall let your glory fall let your glory fall let your power fall let your power fall in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus in the name of 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 Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. I want you to pray right now. I want to give you 20 seconds, just you and the Lord. I want you to pray. And when you pray, I want you to, as you're praying, I want you to say, Father, let your will be done in my life things that has been holding me back knowing or knowing unknowing whatever it is that's been holding me back father in the mighty name of jesus may it be removed from my life may it lose hold from off my life in the mighty name of jesus may i no longer be in delay mode may i no longer be but in drive mode but in drive mode moving forward moving forward moving onward moving on in the mighty name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ I want you to pray. Go pray. Take 20 seconds. Father, pray. Let your will be done in my life. Your pray. will that has been appointed for me. Lord, let, it be let, be let every spirit of delay be cast down. Let every spirit of delay down. Come on, open your mouth and pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Yeah, In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Did you have a wonderful time tonight in the yes. presence of the Lord? Did you have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord? Yes. I thought you left already. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I forgot. <laughs> mm. Okay.
Okay. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't remember. <laughs> How long have you been back? We came last Friday, but um, we came kind of late. Two of you, come. Stand here. Honey, come. The Lord just, I, 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 the only reason I'm doing this is because I saw a vision it. I want to do exactly what, the, what I saw in the, my vision. Come. I want you to turn. You both of you lift your hands to heaven. Mama is going to touch you. In Jesus' name. I know this may sound crazy, but I want you to put your right hand on her head. Are you ready? Give mama, the, hold mama uh, the mic. Give her. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your will be done even now. Let your will be done even Concerning now. your daughter. Concerning your daughter. Clarity. Clarity. Favor. Favor. Abundance, abundance, harvest, harvest increase, increase even, now, even now in the mighty name of Jesus. The name may there be a turnaround right now. Let there be a turnaround may, right doors now. Open, may doors open, financial doors, financial doors business, doors, business doors, even relationships. Even relationship. Doors be open. Doors be open now. Now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name, in the of, mighty Jesus. name of Jesus. In the mighty name Mama of Jesus. Mama blow on her. Just blow on her. In Jesus' name, Mama, come touch, touch her, touch her. Fire, just say fire, just say fire, fire, fire. Fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. I thank you now. I thank you now. I thank you now. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Now when you go back, you will see God's hand at work. Amen. I receive. Okay. Amen. Before you went to Maryland, where were you before? Here? No. Before you oh, went. Oh, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Is family there? Mm-hmm. Okay. The Lord is going to touch, I uh, don't know why, but I saw a woman. I don't know who this woman is. My mom. Okay, it's, is there in Minnesota? Yes, my mom. Okay. Yeah. Prophesy. So, I don't know why, but I saw your mom as a woman of God. Mm. A praying woman. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me he's touching her. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. Because there's been an evil spirit that has been trying to mess with her health. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Prophesy. You are Prophesy. Yes, I do. I do. And I saw an evil spirit dealing with relationship problems, mm -hmm. trying to follow you mm -hmm. from true. that. Prophesy. Uh, yes. Is what I'm saying making sense? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. So the Lord told me to tell you, now that you're here, the Lord said, this spirit is leaving you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just telling you. Amen. <laughs> They're not rejoicing for me. They're rejoicing for what God is doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yes, I am. Yes. Can I be honest with you? Can I tell you what I saw? You can tell okay. them, yes. When you left here, you mm -hmm. went there. Mm -hmm. When you went there, I saw two spirits following you from mm. there when you left and went to Maryland. Mm. Because I saw something following you going to this apartment home looking place. Mm -hmm. And I saw you in there. Mm -hmm. When I, when you were, I don't know why I'm seeing this. I'm just telling you as I, I'm seeing mm -hmm. this. Prophesy. Mm -hmm. When I saw this thing trying to follow you, I saw for some reason your stomach got upset. Mm -hmm. I have when a lot you, of stomach issues. Okay. <laughs> Prophesy. So this thing, when I saw this thing, I didn't like it because based off of what I saw, this thing came from where you went. 
And it has been happening. I know that you've been saying you've been having that for mm -hmm. a while now. Mm -hmm. But it came from mama. Mm -hmm. the, the prophesy, side. prophesy. Because oh. the spirit of infirmity has been moving mm -hmm. in that way, mm -hmm. in that lineage there. My sister has like stomach issues. I too. know. Yeah. Prophesy. <laughs> prophesy. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I thought I was trying to. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Lord told me to tell you from tonight, mm -hmm. this stomach issue will end. That's Amen. Why, that's why I was touching. Amen. Because Amen. fire was burning this thing. Yes. Amen. Okay? Amen. Not only that, we need to pray too because I saw an evil spirit trying to attack the reproductive system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your lower part of your stomach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even your sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> you are the spirit. <laughs> There's something else. God himself is literally. <laughs> yes, I yes, receive it in yes. Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So the Lord told me to tell you this. Yes. The Lord told me to tell you from tonight. Yes. Healing is not only coming to you, but Amen. it's coming to your sister. Amen. 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 Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Yes, yes. My angel went to this, like, a, I don't know if it's like a two-bedroom home or a two-bedroom condo or what or whatever. I don't know. But my angel went there. Prophesy. When my angel went to this place, this place was trouble. Mm. Problems. Mm. But I saw you packing mm -hmm. and moving. Yes. When you packed and you moved, I saw where you went to the state. Mm -hmm. When you got to the state, it was a, a, a drive-by, stop-by before heading to Maryland. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. When, only when she went to Maryland, this spirit tried to follow her. Mm. But the truth of the matter is this. Uh, are you guys living together? Right, right. In, in uh, Maryland, in are you no. guys staying together? For a little bit. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. so this is what I saw. When I saw you in this home, mommy, I saw them in this place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a house, apartment, or what. I don't apartment, know. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I saw them in this place, I saw the enemy trying to attack them mm. in a way where I saw them bickering against each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where there was, uh, their friends, they mean well, but it's like I saw a spirit causing them to argue. Mm. Prophesy. Falling Prophesy. Out, disagreeing. Uh, Prophesy. 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 Let me prophesy. stop there. No, keep going, prophet, please. So when I saw this thing, because in the, f in, I, I'm going, because I'm, I'm just, as I'm saying, Rivi, I'm just saying what I'm seeing. Prophesy. Prophesy. Because the thing about it is, mm -hmm. you have a big heart, she has a big heart. Mm -hmm. But there's this spirit that has been attacking relationships with women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Prophesy, it's true. You get what I'm saying? I do, 100%. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord told me to tell you, being with her at this time is mm -hmm. breaking that. Amen, Whoa. amen, amen. Are amen. you understanding? Yes. Amen. Because mm -hmm. I saw this thing, this, this spirit, is like when it comes to other women being friends with you or that it just don't work. It doesn't work out, yeah. It don't work. Yes, You prophesy. can't mix prophesy. with them. You, mm -hmm. can't, uh, you don't like the talking. You don't like the foolishness. Keep mm -mm. it moving. Go up the road. Uh, but God told me to tell you mm -hmm. that he is giving you self-control. Amen. Amen. Okay? I receive. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that way you're able because God is God wants to give you favor with great women. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I receive. Amen. A woman of power Amen. and fire. Amen. Amen. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I want you to get ready for that because now from tonight, everything from your life is changing for the better. Amen. From Amen. tonight. I receive. Amen. You came here, you met yes. Jesus Christ, and he's moving on your behalf. Amen. 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 You understand? I understand, yes. So by the time you get back home to Maryland, yes. watch everything shift. Amen. And Amen. The Lord, I don't know why, I saw your phone ringing, mm -hmm. and I saw you around this computer. Like Prophesy. a laptop or something. 
prophesy. And I saw you doing some form of application thing. I don't know what it was that you were doing. Work stuff, I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me that I'm approving you for something that even they didn't approve you for. Amen. I'm giving you favor. Amen. I receive. Is that what I'm saying? Yes, it does make a lot of sense. She's private, so I don't want to put her stuff out there. No, you can put it out there. What? You put it out there. It's okay. But God told me he's given her favor. Because of where and what she wants to do. Amen. Because Amen. the truth is there's business on me. Mm -hmm. But Amen. I saw you also teaching. Amen. And I saw you doing things in the area of business. And I don't know why to, but the Lord told me to tell you this. I don't know why I saw this, but I saw you doing something. I don't know. It's like you had access to the storefront place. Storefront uh, like a storefront place. I don't know. It's like a commercial building or something. Like amen, that. amen. 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 You get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. So I yes. want you to get ready for that because amen. God is going to give you favor. Amen. You amen. I saying? receive. Yes. Are you amen. Sure? Uh, yes, I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do even now. I thank you for your favor upon them. I thank you for your favor upon both of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your fire. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank you. I thank you. She'll never be the same again. Open doors. Access. I thank you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can I tap on your foot? Is that of okay? Course. Father, I thank you. Thank you. I thank you that where they're stepping, where they're walking, I thank you for favor. And I thank you that it's done. Hey, Jesus, the Lord said, do it one more time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have to obey God. Yes. He uses the foolish things to confirm the wise. Some things may look foolish to you, but... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A uh, quick question. Uh, how, did, how, who, how did you hear about us? Um... I'm, I'm blanking right now. Uh, uh, Jackie. Jackie, I taught her surfing the other day. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wish she didn't say that. <laughs> I, okay. I wanted and to, she did so good. Uh, wow. Listen to me. I was going to tell you this. I don't know. Can I ask you a strange question? Uh, are you married? Yeah. Okay. Is it, do you have children? Is it two or what? How much two kids, kids yeah. Okay. Professor. So, listen Sorry. to me. Lift your hands to heaven because the Lord Jesus is about to do something major for you. I don't know why I'm seeing this. You're standing there, but I don't know why. But the Lord told me that he's touching your lower ear of your back. Mm. He's doing a new thing concerning the lower ear of your back. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the Lord told me he's also touching your knee. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay? Because mm. what I saw over there, what I was going to tell you before you, you, you got there before me, I saw you on this thing. And I saw you in water doing this. <laughs> but I, yes. didn't, I, I was going to say it. <laughs> so when Prophesy. I saw him doing this, I said, oh, my guy's a server. <laughs> but not only that, but the Lord told me this. I don't know why, but the Lord told me that we need to also pray for your wife. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes, God. Because the Lord wants to do a new thing in her. Yes. Yes, God. And it has been Come on. really something heavy on your heart, too. Mm. Uh, because mm. the truth is you love the Lord. Yes. And you really truly love him. But there's so much that has happened. Mm. And God wants to not only heal you, yes, but he God. also wants to set you free. Yes, <laughs> Jesus. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Is that okay? Can, yes, is God, that okay? Come on. So I come want on, you to God, know this. Go. The Lord told come me on. to tell you this, that it is well. Oh. <laughs> it is well. Thank you, Lord. Thank Some you, things Lord. God just says, so He keeps it simple. Mm -hmm. It's simple. You don't need to do the whole, and I'm seeing. <laughs> no, God just told me to tell him, it is well. And the Lord told That's me to it. tell you that That's peace it. is coming to your mind because I saw an evil spirit trying to attack your mind at times. Mm -hmm. And the Lord told me to tell you, tell him to rest because his life is in my hands, saith God. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. And the Lord told me to tell you there is a, a strong wave of peace that is coming to your home. Oh, yes, Lord. Are you hearing me? Yes, God. 
there's a strong wave of peace coming to your home. Yes, God. And even in the marriage, even with the kids, there's Jesus. a heavy wind of peace coming God. to your home. Jesus. And the Lord said, I don't know why, but the Lord said, get ready for the month of January. <laughs> I don't know why. Why are you okay. laughing? Okay, let's go. Okay, get let's ready go, for the God. month of January. Come because on. the Lord told me Come to on. tell you by next year, this time, you will be shocked to see where you will be. Hallelujah. Oh. Prophesy. 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 Yes, God. Thank you, God. And I don't know why, but the Lord told me to tell you that he has anointed your hands for business. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. the Lord says he is <laughs> doing a new thing in there. I don't know why. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you do. But yeah. I don't know. Do you know anybody in construction or something, someone that does kind of... Uh, what do you call the construction stuff with uh, flipping homes or whatever stuff? I, I know, know people. Yeah, people that do that. Friends. A lot of friends do that. Okay, but this one is a young man that I saw that is, I don't know, he's like a friend, very close to you. Mm. And the Lord told me that he's touching this man. Prophesy. Okay. 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 Thank you, God. Let me ask you a strange question. Who's David? David. Yeah. Do you know who, do you know this David? This, do you know a David? David. I know some Davids. You know some Davids. I know some Davids. Uh, this one is a young man. Uh, this one, I saw him like he's married. David's married. He's thinking. Oh, man. Oh, I'm don't just, rush. God is doing I so know. much. <laughs> I he's know. like, you're going to know it later. Don't worry. Don't worry. But I, I'll just say this. Think about it. Yeah. But I'll just say this to tell you. What he's about to do for you, he's going to do to two other young men that I saw standing with you. Wow. 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 Prophesy. Quick question. Do you, uh, do you have, are you a only do you have brothers? or? I have two brothers, okay. yeah. Prophesy. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> so nobody looks at you. He's just throwing stuff out there. He doesn't... <laughs> just me. The mom, God is speaking to me. <laughs> So the Lord told me he is doing it for two others mm. that I saw standing with you. Mm. That could be my two brothers or my two, two. No, no, no. It's your two brothers. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The yes. Lord is touching your they two brothers. Jesus so and then much. it will happen uh. to, your, to, to the kids. Uh. I Amen. saw it trickling down. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want you to get ready. Yeah. And uh, while you're out there surfing, be careful, please. Because <laughs> you know Amen. when you're surfing, you know, sharks out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I don't like deep waters. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I don't want to bust my secret. <laughs> but uh, so I want you to get ready because the Lord is, is doing it for you. Uh -huh. Quick question. Do you do anything in the area of investments like on the computer or uh, crypto or something like that? Multiple businesses. I run businesses, but no investments. Okay. I okay, listen to me. There's going to be a door. There's a man that I saw coming to you that's going to speak to you about investing. Prophesy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, please, God. <laughs> uh, no, wait, wait. I know you're saying, please, God. <laughs> when he comes, don't do it. Ah. Uh. I heard him okay. speaking to you, and it sounded promising. Mm. And uh, this, you were standing and saying, yes, God. I saw mm. you saying, yes, this is mm. it. It's not it. Mm. Mm. This guy, mm. I saw him coming. I saw him like sheep in wolf clothing. Mm. A wolf in sheep clothing, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. That's the right way. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Thank you, God. Okay? Don't do it. I saw someone else coming after. That one you will do. Okay, because yes, this one I God. saw you, I don't know why, but I saw you investing in flipping and selling homes. Mm. Okay, and mm. I saw something in that area of investment that I saw you doing, investing in buying, flipping, selling houses. Mm. Okay, and God is going to give you favor in that area in real estate. Amen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, God. Uh, yes. Uh, that is <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want you to get ready for that. Amen. There's, there's, 
there is honestly there's a strong prophetic calling on your life I know this may sound crazy but I saw you preaching like Billy Graham (laughs) prophesy I, I heard you preaching the word and I heard you introducing people to Jesus prophesy and I heard you crying out to God yes. even in the, on the beach literally like praying, talking to him prophesy and as I saw you yes, praying and speaking to him yes, Lord. I saw angels coming to your aid two of them mm. And the mm. Lord told me that he's going to, s- these angels are coming to your aid to help you, one, on your prophetic walk, mm. and two, ministry. Mm. Your right Thank hand you will Lord. be anointed to touch and pray for the sick, and they will be healed. I saw you praying yes, even man. for people with cancer. Amen. Prophesy. I saw you crying out to God for people with cancer. And God is going to yes, use God. you to, p- to touch these people. And he's going to set them free. Amen. Yes, God. Come on. Are you hearing me? Come on, God. Yes. So I want you to get ready for yes, what God, God is about to do. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. That's so weird, Lord. No. I don't think so, Lord. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> no, it's okay if it's weird. <laughs> That's what is weird. Uh, quick question. Do you have an SUV? SUV. Yeah, it's yeah. like a SUV. Like it's like, I don't know, I just saw, is it something like a, a Toyota 4Runner or something like that? Like yeah. That? Okay. Professor. <laughs> it was weird to me. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> Mama, mama's never seen me like this. So Mama's like, hey, oh, you know that boy. You out there checking. <laughs> I saw you driving this SUV, like a tall SUV. Four doors. I yeah. saw you driving. Yeah. Then I saw yep. things on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Prophesy. Come what on. I Prophesy. saw you driving. I saw you Come driving on, through Malibu. <laughs> yes, God. Come on. When you were <laughs> driving on. through Malibu, I saw you hitting Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. 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 Prophesy. <laughs> Prophesy. <laughs> Prophesy, Lord. <laughs> Prophesy. <laughs> 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 Prophesy. When I saw you driving, I saw you hitting and you're driving, you're doing your thing. And the Lord told me to tell you this. He's protecting you on the road. Oh, because I saw you, you missing Lord. two accidents. Wow. And the wow. Lord told me he's protecting wow. you. Thank you, Lord. Are you hearing me? Thank you, Lord. He's protecting you, said the spirit of the living God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands to heaven. Is it okay? Can I just pray for you? Father, I thank you for that touch right now where he will never be the same again. Let the weight of your glory, let the peace of God be upon him even now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Somebody clap for Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Someone shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want everybody to just lift your hands real quick, real quick. Just say, Father, thank you for being good. Thank you for being great. Thank you for being awesome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, even now, I want you guys to be prepared, be ready as we give back to God in the building of his kingdom. Somebody say, giving back to the giving building of God's kingdom. Giving back to the buildings of God's kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So, I want you to understand, even now, as you are giving to the Lord, put an assignment to your seed as you give to God. Don't just give just to give. Put an assignment to your seed. Father, as I'm giving this offering to you, Father, I thank you for the increase of my business. I thank you for your favor. I thank you for my new home. Father, I may not have the money now or the credit score now, but I thank you for favoring me. I thank you also 
for this new vehicle you're blessing me with, the business that you're giving to me. I want you to put an assignment to your seed. Some of you, you put an assignment, put breakthrough, harvest, put an assignment to your seed. Put an assignment to your seed. Put an assignment to your seed. And as you do it, I want you to watch God. Somebody say, challenge God. Challenge God. Challenge him. I'm telling you, I've done it before. That's why I'm able to take care of my, my, my family. Because when I put an assignment to my seed, I watch and I see him move. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Some of you, you're here. The Lord is speaking to you for you to do a certain seed. You're here. Some of you can do a thousand dollar seed, five hundred dollar seed. Go ahead. Let God use you. If you're giving more, it's no problem. Let God use you. Whatever it is that the Lord is telling you to give, put an assignment to your seed. Put an assignment to your seed. Yes. I always tell those around me because I live that life where I never give small because I'm not expecting small. Yes. I give big because I'm expecting big. Amen. God tells me, empty your account. I say, hey, I'm not telling anybody to do that. But when the Lord told me that, I obeyed. And God blessed me and my family. Hello. 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 I'm telling you, so let the Lord, let, let the Lord lead you. If it don't hurt, it ain't God. If it hurts, that's God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want you to go ahead right now. If you're here, just go ahead. Get that seed in the ground right now. I'm going to give you. I don't. I never rush the offering, so go ahead, and I want you to to to, to get re get ready to give as you give back to the Lord. And those who need envelopes, the envelopes are passing. Those who need cash up information, I believe that uh, it's behind behind, but also on the envelope. And if you need to know, there are people around with the envelope. They can tell you where to give to, where to give to. You must know when my mommy is giving to. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> so I want you guys, go ahead right now. Go ahead right now and, and you give to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 enjoyed that word tonight get up get up that was for me I needed that <laughs> I needed that and I am encouraged tonight to get up and stay up amen amen have you all given and are you have your seeds ready we're gonna pray over our seeds go ahead and lift your seeds Father, we thank you for this evening and this word, Lord God, this encouragement to get up. Thank you for those who have received prophetic words, Lord God. We thank you for speaking through your servant to uplift, edify, and encourage the body on tonight, Lord. We thank you for these seeds that are being planted in fertile ground, Lord. We thank you that these seeds, Lord God, will take root and grow, that they would not be scattered and that would, they would not be eaten up. Lord God, by the enemy. Father, we thank you for each seed going into the ground tonight. Lord God, multiply it five, ten, a hundredfold. Let them see a return, Lord God, on the seeds that they are planting, Lord God. Let the harvest from the seeds be plentiful unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.